Hello students. Today I am telling you about the DNA fingerprinting. The whole lecture is only for the educational purpose. I am Dr. Vipin Chand Patel from LSM Government PC College, Pithalagar. As we, we are well known about the DNA fingerprinting is an advanced technique presently. These DNA, DNA fingerprinting techniques is basically used to identify to the individuals from a sample of DNA. When the unknown samples we collect from the environments with the help of some control samples, we can identify the identity of these individuals are the organisms from the DNA molecules. In this technique, what will what will we, we are doing? In this technique, the extracted DNA is digested by a specific set of enzymes that are known as restriction endonucleases, and that digested fragment of DNA is subjected to gel electrophoresis for the separation. Then these fragments, which are subjected to the gel electrophoresis, are identified by using the label probe. The question is what is probe? Probe is a 10 to 15 base pair sequence whose sequence is complementary to the fragment to be identified. There are 13 different type of variable number of tenbent repeats which are present that loci are used as a probe in case of DNA fingerprinting. So in DNA fingerprinting these hyper variable sequences these hyper variable sequences, these are the 13 variable number of tandem repeats. They are variable from person to person, and these VNTR sequences are identified through to this technique. All the content here has been taken from the EPG part salas, the therapeutic modules, modules, molecular therapeutic fundamentals of gene therapy. For more study, you should go there. In case of there is no chance of similarity between the two loci of VNTR between the two different individuals. Because these are hyper variable regions, these variable number of tandem repeats are hyper variable regions. So there is a very less similarity, very less similarity between the two individuals because these are hyper variable sequences. The eukaryotic genome contains a copies of short DNA sequences. However, it is difficult to identify the exact location of these sequences of the chromosomes. The eukaryotic chromosomes contain say short copies of short DNA sequences, some as short tandem repeats and other things. But it is very difficult to us to identify the exact location of these short tandem repeats with, within the chromosomes. For such type of problems, a nucleic acid hybridization technique is used for obtaining and through these techniques you can sort out to these problems of for such nucleic acid hybridization technique a new in situ hybridization methodology was developed in 1969 by Mary Lou Pardew and Joseph Grayson of the Yale University and through to these techniques you can identify the position of satellite DNA. In this hybridization technique, a label complementary RNA or DNA probe to identify the specific DNA or RNA sequence in cell, tissue, seed, or early embryonic stage. And this technique is also used in medical diagnosis to assess the chromosomal integrity. Now you will see here, this is uh, the figure I have taken from the Chamber et al. 2013. The reference in reference sections you should go here more. Here you will see here, this is an important task if you talk about. Here in this case, this is a 16 base pair core sequence. This is a 16 pair core sequence of human and animals. Here you will see some there are three locus. Three locus repeated sequences. Suppose that you are see GGG. You see here GGG. This locus one, locus two, GG, this one, and GG, and, and again you will see this is GG. So there is the locus three. This is a repeated sequence. 
In this core sequence, you will see here three locus, locus one, locus two, and locus three. In in these locus, the repeated sequence. In mother cell, you will see here. In case of this mother cells, you will see here. This is a heterozygous. In the first condition, you will see here. There are the one, two, three, four, and five. Five locus, which has repeated sequence. And the second array, you will see here the two alleles, which has the two locus, which has the same sequence. Same here in this locus two. Here is the seven and three, and here is the eight and one. Number of these are the, what is this? These are the mini satellite repeats. These are the mini satellite repeats. Whenever you are represented to this one through the uh, through restriction fragment uh, DNA fragments by using the restriction into nucleus enzymes, you will see here that this is the unrelated sample. This is the DNA sample of unrelated sample. And this is a sample of father sample, and this is the sample of child. It is act as a control. This is a sample of mother. We will see here in the case of the child sample. This is this locus. This locus. This allele is homozygous with the alleles of mother. This fragment is similar to the fragments of mother, and the same fragment and this fragment is similar to the fragments of father. That indicates that this child, this child. The biological parents of this child is this mother and this father. But whenever you are using to the unrelated samples, you don't know about that these unrelated samples. So here, in case of unrelated samples, you will see here this is somewhat the similarity, but most of the alleles are not uh, coming in 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 similar. Uh, there is no similar bands except to this one. There is no similar bands. In these unrelated samples, so uh, you can by with the help of this one, you can find out the paternity, biological paternity and maternity of the uh, of the sample of the sample. So through these techniques, and uh, nowadays this techniques has many more applications. In case of this, uh, uh, many other things also. In case of the uh, forensic investigations and other things. So here uh, now the question is what is the principle of this DNA fingerprinting? So now you will see here in a particular protein, in a particular protein, the gene coding the 95% of junk DNA that is not coding DNA, only to 2 to 5% of DNA is coding. Rest of the DNA is junk DNA. That is junk DNA. It is comes in the form of introns. This junk DNA present as a single copy of a special DNA or multiple copies that is multiple copies that is called repetitive DNA. Here you still see in that that case the G G triple G double G the repetitive sequences exist as a long that is a short tandem repeats that is a short tandem repeats the variation in these mini satellite pattern that is detected by a probe along with the stable inheritance forms the basis of the DNA fingerprinting this line is very important this line is very important because this line is the base of this DNA fingerprinting techniques. So the mini satellite, the variation in mini satellite regions, what are they? That the variable number of random repeats. These variable number of random repeats are detected by a probe, by sometimes the radioactive probe also in the nitrocellulose membrane. So and this this probe along with the stable Hannitan forms. So here you will see here that the, how the DNA types. So the genomic DNA, uh, you can identify the genome from your tooth, from your blood. Uh, you can. This is a blood is also a source of a good source of genomic DNA. You are here, your nails, and within because in case of the uh, this genomic DNA is present within the nucleus, except to this one in cytoplasm also uh, the mitochondria is present. Mitochondria is a semi-autonomous organelles. It has also the DNA, but the mitochondrial DNA is insufficient. Is it insufficient and degraded? So therefore. Genomic uh, to take the genomic DNA is more better for those, these techniques. So now you will see here how to stage uh, the extraction of the DNA. So you should follow the protocols for extraction of the DNA. So either the cell membrane raptures, we are using some chemicals and denaturation of the proteins uh, by chelating agents such as the uh, sometimes the STS, sodium dodecyl sulfate, and proteinases. These proteinases are digested and most of the DNA is oxidated by the organic method that is phenol chloride method. Chloroform methods and rest of the methods are also isopropyl alcohol. The other methods are also. So now uh, for the process of extraction of the DNA fingerprinting techniques, 
you can use uh, you can use the different types of the methods methods and uh, through to this process then you can check the check the purity of the DA, purity of the any through either spectrophotometer uh, on the uh, the 200 uh, the absorbance at uh, 260 divided by the 280 absorbance request to be 1.8 then again, if you talk about that, uh, then you you will see through this DNA in the gel electrophoresis also. Uh, so this was the, the purity of the DNA is busted. If in during the sampling process, during the extraction process, if any contamination is exists, then it will it will causes a lot of the problems in the further investigation. So be uh, in case of the extraction process, it is. Uh, 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 to take all the precautions, to take all the precautions as well as uh, do that process. It is a highly sophisticated process, so you should do the process. Now, it is uh, this DNA fingerprinting techniques uh, are most of the investigating agencies also also using to this, such as the FBI, that is the uh, the investigating agency of the US. The code sequence and other things they are using to these sequences. And uh, this is a very valuable techniques. And for to these valuable techniques, uh, the phylogenetic tree, the phylogenetic tree that uh, also determine that we how the phylogenetic tree and similarities, homology uh, among the individuals, among the species and other things. So uh, this technique has a major role uh, in determining uh, in determining the biological samples as well as the homology with the biological samples. I think that uh, you understand the concept. Thank you.